Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today we have a yoga practice for the psoas muscle. So a really deep core muscle that can contribute to things like hip pain, low back pain, or really any kind of pelvic discomfort. I would recommend having two yoga blocks. If you have any, if you don't have blocks, don't worry about it. Maybe just grab a firm cushion instead. And we'll get started on our backs. So settling yourself into the mat, both feet planted to start out, maybe taking a few deep breaths in and out through the nose just to let yourself arrive to the practice. And then we'll pull the right knee in towards the chest, holding on with both hands and extending the left leg long, half wind pose. So just let yourself find the pose. You might like to rock the knee a little bit, left and right, left leg just staying nice and heavy. And then bring that knee into stillness Point through the toes of the left foot and hover that left foot just an inch or two off the mat. So really lengthening that leg far away from you and then begin to press the right knee into the hands. So the left leg is reaching in long and the right knee is pressing away. And just holding here, keep pressing, keep lengthening, hold, hold, hold and relax. Maybe rock that knee a little bit left and right again. See if you've found a little bit more space, perhaps. And from here, we'll come into a gentle supine twist. You can bring that right knee across the body over towards the left. Doesn't need to touch the earth. Just getting a gentle stretch here through the spine, maybe looking over your right shoulder. And a little bit of a funny transition here. So keeping the legs as they are, we're going to turn the upper body towards the right so that we eventually end up in this sort of half frog, half sphinx with the right knee out towards the side. So you're resting down on the forearms. You can bring the palms of the hands together. Gaze can be straight ahead or you can let the chin fall towards the chest. Just allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you need to feel. Notice where sensation is coming up. You might choose to stay right here. You can join me by bringing the left foot in towards the glutes and extending through that leg again. We'll take that a few more times. So bending and straightening that left leg. Observing which muscle needs to work in order to make this happen. And here's a hint, the psoas muscle is definitely involved. So you'll probably feel some sensation in the front of the left hip into the hip flexors. And let's just take one more. And then really pulling that left heel in as close to the glutes as possible. Maybe you add on by holding that foot with the right hand. Pressing the left forearm down firmly into the mat. And then gently release that foot if you had hold of it. Slide the right leg back alongside the left. And just settle into a traditional Sphinx pose for just a few breaths. You might feel a difference between left and right. And we'll make our way back onto our backs for the second side. So once you've arrived on your back, you can encourage that left knee in towards the heart. Right leg is long, staying nice and heavy, swaying the knee a little bit side to side.
And then bringing that knee to stillness, pointing through the toes of the right leg, floating that leg a few inches off the mat, and then adding on by pressing that left knee as if you were going to break free of your hands. And really give it all you've got here. So we're lengthening, we're pressing away, we're strengthening the areas that we need to work hard for us here. Really reach. One more inhale. And exhale, let it go. Really nice. Rock that knee out a little bit. Maybe you find some additional space already. And then holding that knee with just your right hand, we'll shift it over towards the right for that supine twist. Perhaps looking over the left shoulder. Finding space here through the rib cage. Just one more deep breath. And then turning the upper body over towards the left so we can find ourselves one way or another into that half sphinx, half frog. Resting on the forearms, palms together. Shoulders nice and released down the back. I'm going to experiment with the positioning of that left knee. Maybe you hike that leg up a little bit higher or lower. Just depends on where you feel sensation. And then choosing to stay here, perhaps bending and straightening into that right knee a few times. Perhaps each time you bend, that heel can come a little bit closer to your right glutes. Let's take three more. And then on that last one, you might just pull the heel in as far as it can go. You might add on by holding that foot with the help of your left hand. So the psoas is a really important muscle. It's one of the only muscles that connects the spine and the legs. It actually helps us walk. And it's tight in probably most people, largely due to how much sitting we do. So thank you for joining me and taking care of yourself today. And let's softly release that foot if you were holding it, sliding the left leg back to find yourself in a traditional sphinx. Maybe you hold here, maybe this time you take a seal pose by widening the hands towards the outer corners of the mat, index fingers facing forward and straightening any amount into the arms. So we're not looking to feel any pressure in the low back here. If you do, you can either widen the legs or you can come back to that sphinx pose. Let's take two more deep breaths. And then lowering the forearms down, pressing yourself back to child's pose, countering those back bends, sitting the hips back towards the heels, arms reaching out in front of you, forehead falls, either to a block or a pillow, or maybe just towards your mat. On your next inhale, we'll lift up towards hands and knees, just cat and cow a few times. So inhaling to arch the spine, looking up. 
Exhaling to press the mat away, doming through the spine. Just one more like this. Inhaling to arch. Exhaling to round. And then adding on a little bit. So as we inhale to arch, lift the right toes up towards the sky. And then exhale to bring that right knee in towards the chest, knee to nose. And one more. Inhaling, toes find the sky. And exhaling, knee to nose, holding here. And then step that right foot forwards, roughly where your right hand was, so that we end up in this short lunge. And once you're in the short lunge, think about squeezing through the left glutes, bring the hands to the hips, and just notice if one hip has come up a little bit higher than the other. See if we can keep them nice and even, rocking the tailbone underneath. And this might already be enough for some of us to feel a nice stretch through the front of that left, uh, left hip, left hip flexor. Or you could intensify by bringing the arms up overhead and think about lifting the ceiling with the heels of the hands. So holding here, still keeping those left glutes nicely engaged. Really reach. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take hold of the left wrist with the right hand and lean yourself over towards the right. Deep side stretch here, going a little bit deeper with every variation. And again, you might choose to stay here or wherever you are. Or you could interlace the fingers behind the back of the head, press the back of the head into the hands, Bring the chin towards the chest, still squeezing those left glutes, and rounding slightly through the upper back. And wherever you are, whichever variation you've chosen, let's take three more breaths. Think about pressing the right heel down and back, pressing the left knee down and forwards. Really nice. Release whatever you had hold of. This is where our blocks might come in handy if you're using any today. Shuffling the left knee back so that we come into a longer lunge now, resting the top of the left foot down, and the fingertips can be on the mat, or you can use those blocks, or you can also bring the hands to the front knee. So here, just think about finding your lunge, first of all, and that might involve a little bit of swaying side to side, a little bit of pulsing the forwards and back, whatever it is that feels good and right for you. And then if you weren't already, climb both hands onto that right front thigh. Squeeze the left glute, see if the hips can come just half an inch closer to the mat. And then we'll bring the hands to prayer in front of the chest. Twist yourself over towards the right and see if you can hook that left elbow to the outside of that front knee. You might need to use your hands a little bit to get yourself there. Looking over that top shoulder. Really nice. We'll slowly bring the upper body back to center. Hands might come to blocks again. Let's just rock ourselves backwards and forwards a few times. Releasing, getting into the hamstrings a little bit. Stretching through opposing muscle groups. And the next time you find yourself back, you can walk the blocks or fingertips a little bit further back, point through the right toes, and we're just going to experiment and see if we can hover that right foot off the ground. So holding here, you can either hold in place or lift and lower a few times. I know this is not easy. I am here with you. And then replant that foot, bring yourself back forwards, rest the right forearm onto that uh, right knee, and take a few big sweeping circles backwards with that left arm. And 
Last one. Really nice. Now bring the hands back to blocks, the floor, the knee, whatever it is that you need. And think about pressing the left, the top of the left foot into the mat to lift that left knee. You can hold here, or you might even bring the arms up overhead. Wherever you are, three breaths. And then really, really slowly start to lower that left knee down, slowly as you can. And once it finds the mat, we'll return to hands and knees, very nice. Shake that off, those intense stretches. Well deserved for all of us. <laughs> And we'll take things on the second side, beginning with those cat cows, just traditional to start out. So inhaling to arch, look at the ceiling. Exhaling, press the fingertips into the mat and round. Just one more. Adding on on the inhale, the left toes find the ceiling along with the crown of the head. Exhaling knee towards nose. And last one, inhaling. Exhaling knee to nose. Hold it here for just one breath. And then replace your left hand with your left foot, finding that short lunge. Again, hands to hips so that we can assure ourselves that our hips are level, squeezing through the right glutes, tucking the tailbone slightly. And perhaps this is enough to feel that sensation in the front of the right hip. Now again, we have options, of course. You could hold here. This might be really nice. You might reach the heels of the hands up towards the ceiling and press it away. You could once again choose to stay where you are or catch hold of that right wrist with the left hand, leaning yourself over towards the left. And then final option, interlacing the hands behind the head, pressing the back of the head into those hands before bringing the chin towards the chest, rounding slightly through the upper back. And once again, wherever you are, three more breaths. release hold of whatever you had hold of. You can return the hands to the mat or to the blocks. We'll find our way into that longer version of our lunge now, maybe scooting that right knee back a little bit, finding your pose, rocking it out. Returning to your breath if you've lost it. And then we'll bring the hands to the heart in prayer pose, either holding here or maybe helping that right elbow one way or another to the outside of your front knee and taking the gaze over the top shoulder, gentle twist. The right glutes are still engaged and the hips are still sinking. One more deep breath. Wonderful. Bring the hands back to wherever it is that they need to go. You can take the blocks a little bit further back with you. Point through the left toes and see if you can float that leg off of the mat. Either we hold here or we lower and lift. 
side is much more difficult for me. You might be noticing something similar in your own body. Just one more. And then rock yourself forwards. Bring the blocks with you if you're using them. And a few times back and forth with those hips. Just releasing whatever may be building up. And the next time you're forwards holding here, resting the left forearm onto that thigh. Three big sweeping circles backwards with that right arm. The last one. And then press the right top of the foot down into the mat to lift that knee up. You can keep the hands on the floor on blocks on your front knee, or maybe you lift up and hold for three breaths. Very slowly, as slowly as you possibly can, start to bring that right knee a little bit closer to the floor, lowering it slowly. And then once it finds the mat, we find our way back to hands and knees, moving the blocks off to one side, just shaking it out, finding whatever your body needs to let that go. Might like to press one heel behind you and then the other. And eventually we'll end up where we started, back on our backs. A few final stretches. Taking one block or pillow with you so that we can lift the hips up and just slide that prop underneath your sacrum. Allow yourself to settle in. Allow the breath to be slow and steady. Once again, we'll bring that right knee in towards the heart, extending through the left leg, pointing through the left toes and letting the foot float above the mat again. So with the added height of the block or the pillow, we're enlisting gravity to give us a little bit of a hand here, lengthening through the front of that left thigh. And then release, let that heel find the mat. Or you can bring the sole of the left foot flat if that's more comfortable. Just holding here. We'll simply switch sides. So the left knee comes in. The right leg goes long, pointing through those toes, floating the heel above the mat. Really think about reaching that leg as long as possible. Reaching the toes for the wall in front of you rather than reaching the heel for the ground. And then you can release through that leg or plant the foot. Two deep breaths. Release hold of that knee. You can keep both feet planted. If this is already a nice sensation, you're welcome to stay here. You might experiment with bringing the block one level higher if that's what you're using. And again, you can keep the feet planted or extend through both legs. Close the eyes. Notice how you're feeling, particularly in the front of those hips, which do so much for us, and yet get very little attention in our day-to-day -day lives. 
A moment of gratitude for everything that they do for us. And then walking the soles of the feet back in if your legs were extended. Lifting the hips up, sliding the block out from underneath them. Settling yourself back down into the mat. And whenever you're ready, rolling over towards one side and lifting up into a comfortable seated position. Might even feel nice to bring the thumbs into those, uh, those hip creases and do a little bit of pressing and releasing. Just noticing if anything comes up for you here. And then all together, let's inhale the arms up towards the sky and exhale them down to heart center. And beautifully done. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Thank you so much for doing it with me. And please do subscribe to my channel if you don't already. If you're wondering what sort of practice might link nicely with this one, I do have a three-day free series for lower back pain, which I will link right here and in the description box below this video. I would love for you to join me there. And in any case, I wish you a beautiful day.